hello everyone so in this session i am going to cover functions functions are one of the basic foundational blocks in programming the very first program that you want to write generally when you start writing uh, programming we call it hello world and that hello world cannot be written without invoking a function so what is a function in a very generic terms function is when you have group of instruction that you want to combine together and encapsulate inside a block such that whenever you need those set of instructions to be run you can invoke the function so why the functions were born the purpose you can you can say what is the purpose one of the important purpose is avoid code repetition right repetition or duplication so imagine you are writing thousands of lines of code right so you are writing and building a software now let's imagine your software has uh, you know your program has thousand lines of code okay now in this thousand lines of code imagine there is set of things that you do right where you are printing something now every time you have to print you have to write this line like this you have to type these lines in fact or copy c control c control v right imagine imagine there was no concept of functions in programming what would have happened this set of line let's say they actually print okay now every time you want to print you have to copy paste that line in the code again and again this would be what are the problems with this waste of time lot of duplication managing it will be headache then say multiple engineers are working together right in then they are also doing the same thing again and again and say imagine you found a bug here right? okay let's say uh, you found a bug huh now that bug has to be fixed everywhere let's say there was a bug here you go and try and fix it now that same bug we have to remember okay i need to fix here 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 this would have been the situation if there were no functions in any programming language right but instead of that the people what they did the people who created programming language they were very smart so what they did they came up with the concept of functions so they said okay this block you call it this is where you write your functions you define them in i mean each programming language has different style of doing it right so they said okay you define the function here and uh, your line of code for that function can be here wherever whatever you want and then whenever you want this function you don't have to copy paste the line you just have to refer to me you just have to call my name you just call my name and whatever instruction you have i will execute them okay so like from here i can just say that function name here i can call that function name and give it whatever input data that i need so automatically automatically during execution the binary code that get generated in that they add a command to the processor and tell the processor that from here don't go to the next line you jump jump to this function wherever that function is in the memory similarly they do similarly they do from here right so you just have to call it with a name call it with a name to jump there okay now which is better let's say this says a and this says b so as a engineer all of you can unmute your mic and tell me which is better a is better or b is better yes sir correct yes a is better yes it will save your time yes it will, it will save your time and say if you found a bug let's say you found a bug here how many places you have to fix the bug only one place only one place right so yes, functions now even in the interviews even in the company we like the person who try to write small small functions to do the work we don't like the person who write one long program and give it to us because it is so much uh, difficult to understand that code and review that code so be it exam be it college be it interview be it when you join the company you have to break down your tasks into smaller functions so it means you should have a thinking on understanding how to logically group them it is not like that okay first i'll write 100 lines and that 100 line ka you know i'll cut like a cucumber right the way we cut cucumber you know <laughs> i'll cut like this 
that shouldn't be the case the way you, the way you break down that code is uh, actually an uh, skill such that there is no repetition of the lines so you have to think in logical form okay what is this guy doing 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 so you have to group those lines based on some logic say you broke this line like this it does it is not no use because then again you are repeating the lines you wrote here then you are repeating that here you are repeating that here then it is no use then you did functions just for the sake of functions like you in your mind you thought this uh, one line to 100 line and then in then you just draw the line and you created like this right and another thing that happens if you write like this if you write like this your program will become smaller if you do proper grouping of instruction your programming will become smaller do you agree this approach yes, your sir. code will be less this approach your code will be more do you agree with that yes sir so what is the syntax then what is the syntax of a function and this trust me be it python c java it doesn't matter whichever language you take right so this is the basic syntax okay the first part is what is that it returns what is that it returns okay the second part is the name of the function okay now there are different rules here and then third part is we call it function arguments function arguments or arguments okay and then generally you know some programming la language will have this uh, sorry it will have this curly brace someone will not have curly brace they will instead have a tab like python right so function and programming language can have different uh, expectations but they will have this either tab or this they will have a mechanism to build a compound wall compound wall against this function so that for the compiler and for the reader we know what are the boundaries what are the boundaries of the function boundaries is needed because you need to know where it will start where the function will start and where the function will end right you need to know the boundaries then at the end there will be some somewhere here there will be exit points okay exits there will be some exits here from this function and if no exits are given when by default whenever it ends no at end end also it will exit okay now let's understand this syntax very very carefully please pay attention the function is kind of a subordinate right it is like a worker so to this worker you can say worker or you can also say a friend function is like a friend right and you need some help so that whenever you need that help you call that friend so you are implementing a function as a friend who will do that work for you whenever you call let's say that friend is specialized in that work so when you call the to call the friend the friend will have a name okay now some names can have a gap right like my name full name is actually mahesh already right but in case of function be it any language there is one rule that there cannot be a space there cannot be a space in between so function name should never have a space in between so in python they write it always like you know you say sum of numbers right we'll do it like this with underscores in python they use underscores and in some language they use something called camel casing camel casing means you write first letter small right you say sum and then you say of and then you say numbers let me write in a big way because that font is too small so the camel casing is like your first one will be small first letter the beginning here will be small then you will say all will be small but then next words right so next words the first letter will be big and then again small sum of then numbers n will be big capital and then small sum of numbers the other example is i'll say get student student names again no space but s is big and n is big and the g is small so this is called camel casing and in python we will write it as get underscore student underscore names see this is just a convention 
for compiler it does not matter for compiler i would have given it as a b c x y g or i j k uh, star you know star is not allowed but i could have given any junk or any alphabet to compiler for compiler it really doesn't matter we name them properly for humans to understand for humans to read it is our own convention and be it your exam be it your interview make sure the function names you write it properly use a descriptive name okay so name is one what are the rules in name rule number one it cannot have those spaces it cannot have uh, some of the special characters right and then you have to either use camel casing or underscore and then you should use a descriptive name and uh, the next part is the boundary right the boundary means whether it will have those braces or it will have indentation the tab one tab is equal to five space so you have to leave five spaces for one tab or press the tab key on the machine okay that defines the boundary then the beginning of the function the very first line of the function is the uh, line after the name that is the first line okay and at the end wherever if you close the brace or your indentation ends no that is the end of the function like say you wrote a function and then you had this indented here but then you started writing another one the without any gap it will not run these lines because this is under the indentation right so this under indentation it will work i'll show it when i show the code so this is the boundary part name is done boundary is done next comes function arguments what it means is let's say you are asking your friend right do something for me right like say you said uh, you asked your friend uh, on the way can you pick up a pen for me so you gave what information you said a pen for me or one pen so how many pens you need you need one pen one item you need one item then what do you need you need a pen okay then your friend will ask what color you need then you will say i need blue color then your friend will ask what type of pen you need do you need ball pen do you need ink pen do you need sketch pen do you need permanent marker what kind of pen right you will say you need ball pen then your friend may ask what is the brand you want sometime right they will say you will say no no specific brand any brand you may say any brand or say cello or renault right then you they will ask okay how much price also like what if your friend buys a uh, most expensive pen <laughs> in that brand right you will say no no buy it anything under 10 rupees rs 10 right so imagine just to ask your friend to buy a pen for you you have to give all these input parameters correct parameter means input information function parameters if your friend is a function imagine the parameters that you have to give you have to tell the quantity you have to tell what is the item you have to tell what are the attributes the blue is an attribute ball pen is an attribute the cello is an attribute then price without this input arguments If you ask your friend to buy a pen then your friend may just buy anything and you may not like it similarly a function is also like that when you are calling a function you have to tell exactly what and all are your input parameters so what is these are called input parameters or function arguments so whenever you think of a function you don't remember this exam you you have to recall this example right function arguments and this argument sometime can be 1 sometime can be 2 sometime can be 3 sometime can be 10 and in my life uh, in my career i have seen functions which are taking even 15 20 arguments okay we start getting confused after that you know so, so much uh, arguments like there is a function that takes like 25 input parameters i mean that is not considered good by the way it is considered as a bad code okay so generally you don't want to pass those many function arguments you want to keep it less is function arguments concept clear why it is needed and it could be of any type okay it could be of int for example the item is int okay number then uh, pen is again a string right then there is a money the money could be have been float so data type of that input argument could be anything but is it compulsory to pass an argument so no the input is not mandatory not mandatory okay 
then what is the third part the third and the most important part is what is that it will return to you in the pen example what is that your friend will return to you they'll get to you they'll get, get a pen sir. they'll get a pen right so here the return is a physical object pen correct so the return is written generally here in the left side and in some of the new languages they are writing it at the end of the name they write it here okay they write the end here so in some older i mean some of the older languages we write in the back side and some in newer ones they are writing it in the front and in the latest version of python it is saying don't write it i'll figure it out myself <laughs> so that is why python is called as a most user friendly language because it is making you do less work less work and uh, think less about this all things but in java in c in uh, c sharp you all have to write return type here on the left side okay